go. I love Monday nights. I love Monday and Wednesday nights. Rose, so good to see you. My name is Dr. Tova Goldfein, and this is TMS Roundtable Global. I am live from Israel. Rose is live from Australia. It's 7 a.m. in the morning, Boker Tov, and she's going to introduce our guest tonight. Good morning, world. Today, we're fortunate to have Yuval Alon. He's an ISTDP psychotherapist and a social worker. He's also instigated a whole ISTDP program in Israel and is bringing this to the, I suppose, to the masses, if you would say that. And he's trying to actually expand the ISTDP uh, world for all of us. Uh, we've all attended some of his lectures and now he's come to speak to us. Now, if you think about it, we're just looking at how the brain and the heart need to be connected for us to be pain free. And that's the motive for this conversation today, that if, without the heart being part of the, integrated with the brain, we're going to suffer. And suffering, you know, the Dalai Lama will talk about it all over the place, that, you know, suffering is, is something that happens to us when we're not connected to ourselves. Now, Yuval, please tell us how you got interested in ISTDP, because it's, it's a fairly complex um, type of therapy and of course it's about feelings and that's what's so important with with patients with pain they usually have repressed feelings or in other words they can't even find them they just find them in their heads but they can't experience them so what what brought you to that because it's a really interesting journey for most uh, for most therapists how they got there and then please share with us the whole idea that it's an act of love to look at our feelings. Okay, so thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, hello to everybody that is, uh, is watching. Because we, we invite you to take an active, uh, active part, ask questions so we can have a, a great uh, discussion and we can all learn uh, together. Uh, so what the thing that brought me to ISTDP, I am actually coming from a, a different field. I come from, a, from the field of uh, practicing law. So I was, I was a lawyer. And oh, I, I, didn't know that. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sur surprise. <laughs> so when, when, I was, when I was working as a lawyer, I was working uh, mostly with the refugees. So there was something there that uh, was more from, from the heart, as you start saying, heart. And, and, and feelings and, and heart and brain and everything links to be connected. So it was in my practice also practicing law, but I knew that I want to do something different, more, more with the heart. And uh, that drove me to, uh, to go to, to study therapy and study social work and uh, do a real transit in my uh, professional career. And uh, because I think because uh, I came from uh, practicing law, so I I look for something that is more. Uh, it's it's on the one hand it's deep and it's meaningful, but on the other hand it's also practical. So something that you can you can do and feel and have the both sides of the coin if you if you wish. And uh, I was looking for it for a few years, you know, probably you heard these stories about, uh, especially from therapists that go to ISTDP, we were looking and looking and looking and looking mm -hmm. for this kind of therapy that is really like, you can sit uh, as a therapist and, and really talk about things, you know, not just saying, uh, okay, I hear you or just nod or, uh, or be passive or, or saying, I don't know, or, or thing like that, or the, the whole purpose of therapy is not to know, which is true in some way, but it's not the whole purpose. So I was going on like this for, for a few years until I, I was in a seminar that I saw the, the work that I could do with, uh, with, with ISTDP. And it was for me, like I knew in, in that moment oh. that this is, the, <laughs> this is the thing that I'm going to, to do. And uh, Ever since I, I really I haven't looked back. Like I, I reached to the to the best uh, teachers of ISTDP, uh, John Fredrickson, Patricia Coughlin, Alan Abbas, and really try to uh, do uh, to learn from them, 
and to, to organize seminars so people in Israel can, can have exposure to this great, uh, great method. And, and the rest uh, of us. Everywhere. Yeah, and all, and yeah, and all over the world, you know, the, the yeah. COVID has it at its uh, advantages as well. <laughs> so th this is like I feel for me, it's the most important thing is really to to reach to the person underneath, right? Mm -hmm. To 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 remember like there is a person there, and from the very first moment we want to reach to that person, we do it with compassion. And, and we do it with a lot of love. Everything that we do in the therapy is always with love, but our goal is to reach to the person. And, and if he doesn't see it, so we, we, our, our job is to help him see it. This mm -hmm. is our job. It, it's, it is a complex thing, thing to do, but we will try to, in this conversa conversation, see that we can do like even each and every one of us that, that is sitting at home right now for himself doesn't matter what you are dealing with you can do something good for yourself now even if it's a little thing so this is our goal in therapy you know instead of just listening to to and, and not responding and be passive and then waiting and, and our job is to invite people to do something good for themselves each and every I just want to say, in and, and this is, this is I, I didn't know what ISTDP was before I met Rose two years ago. And what I learned on top of that, and I, I use it for with our mutual clients or my client, and I say, even if you do something not so good and that you're going to judge what you do, you get to accept that about yourself. It's like the opportunity to accept and recognize is I've never saw therapeutic process that way and ISCDP teaches me so much as kind of a little outsider of it it's just phenomenal yeah yeah you you get to learn tons about yourself mm -hmm. during this process because of the, the intention is really to get to the person so on the way you know you you go to this journey and when your intention is to really heal this is an ambitious way of looking at things but when your your uh, your goal is to help people heal, so they can learn a lot of things, a lot of great things going on on the way, right? Because, yeah. So I so what was the other part, Rose? I uh, of, uh, of the question. <laughs> well, we we thought we'd talk about the fact that it's love we're looking yeah. for. It's love yeah. and care, and and the whole idea of this self compassion is not really. It's sort of like a buzzword, but it's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for empathy, aren't we? And we were, we were going to sort of talk in that direction so that we could draw that whole idea out that, you know, self-criticism is never going to give us empathy. Self-criticism yeah. or, or watching ourselves, how would you put it? Uh, second guessing. Or judging or judging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so from an ISTDP perspective, it's sort of connecting the heart and the brain in a loving manner rather than a punitive manner, you know? Yeah, so yeah. like really uh, uh, thinking about this, this compassion, like everybody talks about in therapy, so you have to be compassionate and you have to show empathy to the patient, but what really is empathy, right? And what really is, is compassion, you know? Because when people are sitting and criticizing themselves, Right. If we just sit there or if we just get, get go along with it, so we have a self-destructive therapy. Right. OK, so of course that this uh, uh, this way of relating is something that they learn. OK, it's not their fault that this is going on, but we need to help them first step to help them see what is going on because nobody wants to criticize himself, right? Like if we talk in, in the most simple way, nobody wants to criticize himself. But, you know, patients, they come to therapy or people, you know, they're talking, okay? And, and we don't notice because most of our communication, you know, it's not positive. Our brain is functioned to survive, right? So we need to detect like these dangers and we need to be ready and we need to be on the edge. So it makes sense that our, our, our conversation will be in this uh, uh, judging way. Okay, we judge people, 
we judge ourselves, so we don't want to get along with us. So empathy will be, okay, let's see what we can do about what is going on here, okay? If we pay attention to what is going on here, there is a part here that is judging you. So what can we do about it? This is empathy, actually. Like, what can we do about this judging part? That is, and why, that is and why is it so, yeah. why is it so yeah. comfortable for many of us? And why is it so difficult to shift? Yeah, because it's like, it's like um, I don't know if it's comfortable, right? Because uh, if we get into it, so, yeah, because it's, it's hiding the person, actually. Like, the judge is hiding the, the person. Right. So, yeah, so can we find out, like, who, who you really are under this, this uh, judging mechanism? Okay, so just, just the way a, a person learn to relate to himself and to other people, so he can think that, like, like he can judge himself. He can think that other people are judging him. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's not so comfortable. So we want to to really help them to mm. get to it's, the it's, person. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't it a habit? Isn't it a habit? Like, there people are doing it without thinking because it's it's kind of this this habitual yeah. way that because they're yeah, really yeah, really sure. Good, so, yeah. Yeah, th this is what is going on. So we are in ISTDP. We want, okay, this is what is going on. Can you see it? Mm. Because we need people to see. Okay, this is very important. We don't jump ahead like with, with feelings, but we need people to really see what is going on. Okay, so and what is the price, right? Like when you judge yourself, like you don't get a, a real opportunity to show up, mm. right? Yeah. Could I, yeah. could I also mention that this is in regard to attachment and how we learnt originally. Tova described it as a habit, but it's, it's more of, of a fact that a, a child, for example, has been criticised or has yeah. been left out of the picture or whatever, and then that judge comes in and sits around. Would you explore that a little bit more for our audience to Yuval, yeah. because that's the important key in a way, to all of this self-judgment, isn't it? And lack of yeah. love. You know, a child, a child pours out love to its caregivers, but it doesn't receive the same amount of love back. It's not mirrored yeah. back to them. So it must be the child's fault, not the caregiver's fault. Could, would you expand on that a little bit more, please, yeah, so that so, our audience will understand better? So I would say it's all about the love, right? Yeah. So love can go uh, on different ways. So if a child learns that in order to, to receive the love of the mother or of the, the caretaker, he needs to repress his feelings, right? So, or if he, he was angry, it was not allowed, or if, if he was sad, it was not allowed, or he was criticized, so he can do it to himself or he can do it to other people. But this is the way that his brain works when he wants to be in, in a relationship. Right, yeah. so so yeah. it's really unconscious, and it just it is in a way like a, a way to to love other people is to hide himself. This is the way he knows how to be in a relationship. This yeah. is like you know yeah, there is this phrase. This is gift of love, right? So he will guard other people, or he can attack other people. Right? It can go both ways, but but he won't show the real. The, the real him, like his real feelings, yeah. if if those feelings didn't get their, their place, right? He won't show them. So this is why in therapy, we want to encourage him, we want to, to first to see what is going on and then to encourage him to be open with us, yeah. which will bring this mixed feelings with us, of course, and this all the attachment system with us. This can go on uh, positive feelings, like feeling good with us, okay? This can bring the anxiety up with positive feelings, and this can bring the anxiety up with, with anger or, or, or other feelings, okay? But we want to really uh, bring the mixed feelings uh, in the room mm -hmm. with us so we can have, we can have uh, uh, an opportunity right to to have a a new experience right? 
Yeah, and an experience to Yuval that isn't going to bring um, conflict with the person listening, because in the past when they've had uh, conflictual feelings, it's it's they've been they've been uh, uh, um, ignored or 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 ridiculed or whatever. Whereas with the therapist, they're actually able to bring all their feelings out, positive feelings, loving, warm feelings, and annoyed feelings. And the therapist doesn't get, um, uh, uh, doesn't retaliate, I suppose. Right. Yeah. So they're allowed to see the whole picture of their lives, aren't they? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, so what will, what will come up is the, the way that they are used to. Of course, like, like we said before, so if they're not used to, like giving room to their feelings. So we, when we invite them, they will use defenses or their coping mechanism, mechanism as, they, as they learn to, right? So this is not, not a problem for, for the therapist, but I, actually it's a gift for the therapist. So now the therapist can really learn and can really see, okay, this is the way this person is relating in his relationships, okay? When when we invite him to reveal himself, okay, he used this defense, he used this defense, or anxiety is, is going up, anxiety okay. is going uh, one way, anxiety is going too high, so right. it, all the things that is going on, it's, it's really uh, very, very uh, important information, what we talked about, that we learn a lot. So from this process, okay, mm -hmm. when the process is from the experience, from the experience of um, inviting feelings, we can learn from the anxiety that is going up, okay, and we can feed that back to the patient. Okay, see, when we try to give you the opportunity, mm -hmm. right, to really be in touch with your feelings, this is what we see, whatever we can see. You, can okay? you give an example? Like, I first thing I think yeah. of is, of course, I'm just going to say, like, for example, when Michael Galinsky laughed when Dr. You know, Irene Feinblatt was asking him a serious question, he laughed and she said, are you aware that you're laughing? And a lot of people will send Rose and I notes with an LLL and we're like, they're laughing at themselves. So there's one example, but maybe you can explain it in your words, an example of when someone's hiding their feelings with the defense yeah. and then you help them get to the to the bottom. Can you give an yeah, example? So the yeah, like uh, there can be um, someone that is coming to therapy and uh, she's coming, let's say, really ready, that she's saying that something is bothering her for many years, and there is this, uh, this feel like feeling of tightness in her chest that she, she been to uh, therapy before, but it's something that is going on for many years, and she has a loss in her family when she was a little child. And uh, when we start to explore more and more, so we learn that as a child, she was really uh, sensitive to her mother, okay? So her mother was crying a lot through to the loss that they had in the family. So her mother was crying a lot, like very like fragile and uh, very sensitive. So the child learned that she needs to hide her own feelings in order to guard the mother, okay? So she learned it from a very early age. So when she come to therapy and now she's, grown up and she wants to know things, right? And she wants to really stand up with the mother. So what do you think she will do? She will guard the mother, okay? Yeah, oh, now, oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. wow. So she, yeah, she will, she, yeah, she, she is uh, in, in, a bind, in a bond with the mother, mm. like her role is to keep on the mother, that the mother is very sensitive, so she needs to hide her feelings from the mother in order to the mother for the mother to feel good. You know, she, she's, still, know, she's, still, protect, she's still protecting yeah. her mother because yeah, but, that was the yeah. survival. What she learned yeah. as a child. Yeah, yeah. because wow. because it was just the two of them, right? So it was very important to keep the mother close. But now, when she's grown up. You know, it, it comes up in other relationships. It comes in the relationship with the boyfriend. Every time a boyfriend right, is, is going to his parents, you know, for a few days, so she gets depressed, right? So, what, so there are feelings that are coming up there towards people that want to leave her, okay? So in therapy, right, 
when she wants to really know things about her past and the mother is, is, is really shutting down in front of her, so she will have a hard time facing her anger towards the mother, right? Why? Because she loves her. This is important, okay? She, you love your mother, so you learn to protect her. And now that we invite you now to stand up for yourself, you know, feel other, other things towards your mother, the mixed feelings towards your mother, because there is anger there also towards the, your mother, because she didn't give you the space as a child. You need to be a grown-up when you are a child. Right. So, so this way she will be protective and the, the way is really help her see a lot of time how this uh, mechanism is working before, like really, because this is new, this is new to her, right? She never thought about it. It's something new. And she was really surprised also and, and said, wow, I, I thought I was angry with my mother. I thought I was over with it. And I see like, I'm so surprised that it's still there. Wow. Okay, so, so you see that something, that there is an insight, not cognitive insight, but something new is coming up and this is just the beginning. So, yeah, this yeah. is the way that you will be protective in therapy from, from her anger towards the mother. Yuval, within that context, um, uh, the, the child becomes an adult and, yeah. and then they then become the caregiver of the, of the parent in a way yeah. that that doesn't allow the, the the adult then to remain an adult. Does that? Yes. Yeah. They're not able to have an adult relationship with other people because they are falling back on that early early childhood uh, uh, yeah. model. Now the other thing that crossed my mind as you were speaking was you know with patients you they don't have to the old memories become come back and become sort of integrated. Could you mention that? Like you're, you're in therapy with the patient and then all of a sudden a memory comes back. And within that yeah. memory, it may be a terrible memory, but it becomes integrated and it doesn't yeah. have the same fire. Can you, can you yeah. draw, draw a little bit about oh. that? Because a lot yeah, of patients so, are worried about that sort of thing. Yeah, so um, when uh, feelings are shut down, so we don't have access, of course, because feeling and memory is like the same thing, right? Feeling is memory, memory is feeling. If we don't feel, we can't remember. So it's storage, you know, inside, like in the back of our head. Well, but so as, true. yeah, and, and well, when, when we start to mobilize these unconscious feelings, and also when we mobilize in therapy, the unconscious anxiety, like when patients start to, to really get tense and, the, you know, they start to breathe, you see activation of feelings that is coming up. So they, there is like things are starting to get back to them, okay? Because the, the unconscious is mobilized, feelings are in the body, okay? Like the, the energy is flowing. So the, the, I have tons of, of examples, right? And, and of course you, you, do, you do as well, Rose, because when, when the, the, unconscious, the unconscious is mobilized, so patients can, can think and they can recall uh, yeah. missing parts of their life like um, like yeah. i have an example from uh, someone that's um, experienced like very uh, a terrible divorce by her parents like um, really terrible divorce and and haven't spoken to the father like in in five years and uh, remember like only pieces from the day when uh, when the parents like suddenly uh, decided to to get divorced and when she was starting to experience uh, some anger towards towards the mother, things are starting to come back to her, right? She could remember exactly what her mother told her when she went back from school and opened <coughs> the door. And when she opened the door and she could really remember, and this of course brought up uh, other feelings, but if feelings are shut down and patients are, are not involved in the process and there is no experience of feelings, so this, this, these memories will, will remain shut yeah. down, okay? So this is why we, we from, from the very beginning, okay, we want the mobilization of the, the unconscious, right? Like, and I remember Dr. Alan Abbas said this in five minutes, you don't see mobilization of the unconscious. Okay, so 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 you need to start thinking what is going on here, right? What what is operating here? Okay, because this is our life force. 
Okay. Wow. We yeah. Yeah. Li yeah. Li life is hard. We need our 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 power. Our power comes from feeling our emotion, our energy inside the body. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes so much sense that when these feelings are repressed, that the body gets sick, which is something I want to mention. I want you to talk about. But let's just address auras. Auras in Israel, in the north. And um, I'd love you to uh, answer her question. Hiding of feelings as a child may have been a wise protection then. Is there a place to acknowledge and thank that hiding? Sure thing, yeah, we for sure. It, it may have saved your life, right? We heard that a lot of time. Really sure, okay. like, like the child, right, if she's alone with the mother, she needs her mother, right? It's both of them. She's a small child, of course. Of course, you will protect her, right? And of course, when I ask you, what do you feel towards your mother? I wonder how you feel towards me, right? Because there is something there that I'm coming in <laughs> the bond, right? Between the child and the mother. This is, yeah, this can be intense. So you need to acknowledge it. Like you're going into places that the patient have never been before. You need to be sensitive, but you need to be firm as well. Okay, so you need to go at it, but be sensitive, acknowledge for sure. We have to acknowledge, right? We're dealing with people and with persons. So, of course, we acknowledge everything. We respect the person always. All the defenses, mm -hmm. all the anxiety, everything. We accept everything. But we need to also give an alternative. The alternative is the healthy part, okay? So we, we stick with the healthy part. We want people to have the opportunity to really feel in their body, to be one with their emotions so they can they, they can have the benefits and the information that these emotions are, uh, are yeah, you know, that every emotion we talked about is every emotion has its uh, very specific uh, information for us. We can talk about it and, and talk more of it, like the anger, or like to set boundaries and, and really and say, speak our mind in conflict, right? The guilt when we want to repair and when we, we feel that we hurt someone that we really care about. So this is very important. Uh, and sadness and when we really are pain, in, in pain, when we lost someone that we love, okay? That show, it show that we care. So it's very important to give this opportunity for people, yeah. Yeah. Look, on that note, about about loss and repair, can, can we tie that in with Aura's question? Because it, it fits very well. Is there a place to acknowledge and thank that hiding? Yes, there is. Can you talk about that guilt about having to, to hide your real self and how it, how it affects the person's adult life then? Yeah, so I think that if we talk about ISTDP, so it's all about the guilt, mm. right? The guilt mm. that is there to shut down uh, actually every feeling that wants to come, come out. Like, so if a person wants to feel like it will be anger, it will be sadness, it will be grief, whatever it will be. So if there was a tendency to, to shut down, so the guilt will be there. It won't allow... The, the, the person to really come forward. So we want to really, sometimes I could say to, to patients, okay, so we see that there is a, a feeling that is coming up, but it's like you are not allowed to, right? This could be, can, could bring a link, right? This, it's like you, you are not allowed to, like, like it's not okay, like it's against the law for you to feel. So can we hold that? Right? just for, for, for a few minutes and allow you this opportunity to, f to feel your feelings here with me. What, what, do you, what do you say about that? Because you see, it's like it's, it, this guilt is not, it's coming in the way here with you and me. And when, when patients start to feel their feelings, like if it's about, the, it can be grief about oneself, like if, if uh, someone see their defense, so... There can be like 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 pain, I would say pain and guilt, but mostly pain about 
the loss and, and uh, about the use that the, this person of loss uses use this defense. But also when, when anger is coming up and when anger is functioning and, 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 and the patient start to see what the anger is actually wants to do, when he has this opportunity to separate himself from the anger and see what the anger wants to do. So also there, there will be guilt because a lot of time the anger will go on someone that you really love because we know that, of course, that anger and love are really connected, right? When we anger about people we love and we love and so forth. So when the anger, the, the person can really see what the anger wants to do, there will be guilt there yes. because they love them. Yeah, so this is like a complex thing sometimes, like when people don't really understand why go with, with the anger, why feel the anger. First of all, the anger is very important to, to have as a, as a core emotion, right? As to, to set boundaries and to, to really uh, uh, speak your mind in conflicts. And, and so when, when the anger is, is coming up, we want to help. We want to help patients feel them so they can be assertive, they can set boundaries, and also for them to feel the love. This is very important because the guilt is tied up with the love. So when they see what this anger wants to do, they can really be in touch with the love. Okay, so yeah. this is why yeah. are, this is so important. The guilt is very, very important. Yeah. Do you remember, Rose, what Dr. David Spector said about guilt? It changed my trajectory. Do you remember what he said about what guilt means? Yeah, what is it? An act of love, oh, isn't it? No, Dr. David Spector, who's uh, in Australia, um, Rose introduced us. He was had a, he was had an amazing show. He's an ICDP, maybe ES, all those things. He's amazing. He said, guilt is the inner signal of your innate goodness. Oh, there you are. Yes, yes. It's just. I still yeah. have it here. It's just, it, it's so true. If people could put guilt into perspective, yeah. it would help them. And, and, and what Rose also taught me, I, I didn't, you know, I, I have to admit, I didn't know a lot of these things. That, there's no negative emotions. Angers, right. even, even Hillary Jacobs talks about anxiety is a good thing. You know, yeah. that we hear, anxiety I hear is, yeah. Yeah, it anxiety helps us. Is we, good. Need, we need them. Yeah. We need all these things. Yeah. But it's when they're, it's when they're malformed, isn't it, that the problem arises? Yeah, also yeah. defenses. We need defense. Yeah. We need yeah. we need to some defense we have to have some defense. All we be all 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 the time, just feeling, feeling all the time. It's not good. Right? Yeah. Some some reliance on defense is necessary and we perform the best in, in some level of anxiety. Also we know that. Right? Mm. Anxiety is a force a force of, of life is a force to create, it pushes mm -hmm. us. Because if we don't feel anxiety, like if I wouldn't be like a little bit nervous before the show, so why, why am I doing it, right? If I'm not nervous uh, uh, sometimes, you know, with, with patients, so why am I doing it, right? Because when we are excited, this is like, it's the flavor of life. So we anxiety is not a bad, it's like not a bad word. Anxiety is just no. a word that, yeah. no. uh, Well, yeah. it's, it's a little bit different to that though, because anxiety, there's two types of anxiety, Yuval. Actually, you, would you explain a little bit better to Tova how anxiety operates in, in as much as when you're trying to cross the road, you need to be anxious. But when you've got this fleeting anxiety within you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So we, we talk about unconscious anxiety, like, uh, um, you know, so, yeah, if I can talk about it and I see that I'm getting excited, so, I'm okay, so this is one thing, but when uh, we start to talk about you know feelings and and, and i'm starting to to, to get like uh, tight okay and i start to sigh or, or whatever it is or i get stomach aches uh, most of the time these uh, things that patients don't know that they're uh, anxiety okay they think they mixed up anxiety and their feelings so when this unconscious anxiety is operating so people are suffering because uh, their feelings are coming up and their response to those feelings is, you know, danger, 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 don't do that with, from all sorts of reasons. And, and then they feel like it can be like, you know, 
three types of anxiety, straight and muscle, like tension in the body anxiety, really going in the gut anxiety or nauseous, um, or it uh, can go to the head, cognitive uh, perceptual disorder, and can get dizzy, can get... Uh, well, this is how, this equals, yeah. this is, this was brilliant about Davin Lu is that this is why chronic pain or autoimmune disease happens, is my opinion, I'm on the record, because these things become bigger symptoms and they turn into a condition and then the doctor finds a yep. label and that's okay because some of them are physical, but then it should heal from the medicine or from resting or yep. from... So talk a little bit about how Davinlu, maybe more so just how so many of our of the people that come to our show do have chronic pain and autoimmune yep. disease. And, I know. I yeah. really believe strongly they can get helped from this work. So this this is a big problem because there are a lot of people that come to seek uh, medical uh, um, advice, and uh, the problem is not uh, from you know the problem is not something that the, the medical field like can really help them, but their problem is more emotional, and uh, they are getting treatment like in a really bad way, and uh, I think. Dr. Alan Abbas is doing a great work with that and other people as well, of course, like training uh, medical uh, professionals to really get the sense of uh, working with emotions and, uh, and really give this, uh, this, this help that people need because when people suffer uh, chronic pain and the reason is emotional, so the hospitals usually can't help them unless they have really a good knowledge about how to treat, uh, how to focus on emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is really, this is really important. So, uh, and all doctors, be, all yeah. doctors know yeah. that um, in every physical complaint, condition, a symptom, there's an emotional component on how that person's perceiving that and how, yeah. like it, something that I, I think should always be addressed because it's our relationship with that pain or our fear or anger or the yeah. injury or, you know, the trauma or drama around it. You know, yeah. I think it was last week, Michael Galinsky and another therapist were talking about, it's not the trauma that is hurting us. It's the experience of the trauma. So trauma is getting sick. Trauma is having an injury. Trauma is getting a diagnosis. Sure. Of cancer yeah. got treated. so and i think all doctors know this i i know they know it they get taught it and they know about it but they don't really know it like you know like when someone is uh, they will treat someone they they i don't think that this is something that need to be a uh, teach like uh, in in every medical school for sure i know that istdp is being taught some of uh, uh, medical schools but not enough i think it should be like in, in the program because yeah, uh, yeah physicians physician have to know it. it's like it's yeah. a must they, they know that there's a component uh, but they don't know how to address that component and that's exactly. what hasn't happened in uh, medical schools how to address the component of fear of whatever the the symptom is yeah, because yeah, that's yeah, the, sure. the the healing power is to release the um the fear isn't it yeah. To drop the yeah. fear and acknowledge what's going on. Yeah, yeah the fear will the fear will drop. Yeah, the fear will drop yeah. when feelings will rise. This yes. Is like, yeah, this is the task to, to help. The, uh, the fear will drop when the feel the fear will drop when the feelings arise. Yeah. That's, because yeah. The, the link the link the link is feelings then anxiety then defenses. So right. So feelings are coming up. We want to help patients feel their feelings so the anxiety will drop this is also like telling the people that do you want to do that right because you suffer from this tension or it's getting in your stomach so if we first we need to get the of course the anxiety in in, in a level that we can work together and then the purpose is to help them feel so they can be free and the anxiety will drop this is good good outcome and also when people are coming to, to seek medical advice. When they're anxious, the first thing, of course, if it's not an emergency, I'm not talking about that, but if they're anxious, the first thing, regulate their anxiety. Yes. This is the first thing, 
Okay, and this can save a lot of money to hospitals. Yeah. But they can well, come in pan panic attacks, right? Yeah. Or things like that. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking it's called white coat anxiety, isn't it? No, white what is coat. That? <laughs> white coat. <laughs> Exactly. You see a doctor yeah. and your blood pressure rises straight away from fear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So can you talk about more, uh, maybe give an example of how ISTTP can directly, I mean, I know Rose has seen it a lot, can directly help someone's headache go away or stomach ache change. Like what's, what's the simple explanation that's happening for people so they can connect their feelings like this was like what does feelings have to do with it what does feelings have to do with yeah. my pain it has everything to do with it yeah i would think like that if you suffer from chronic pain so first thing of course you know if you can get someone to do the work with you this is great but even if you're just thinking by yourself and you suffer from from this pain so i wonder like if you Think about an example, like in a relationship that you have with someone and, and you can start thinking, just thinking in your head, what feelings do you have towards, uh, towards this person that you have close relationship with, okay? And then see if uh, when you think about those feelings, what sensations do you have, okay? What's a, that, does it bring a good feeling or, or, or something else that is going on. Because there are tons of things that can go on, like people can get stuck in their head with thoughts. And what we really want to do in, in ISTDP is to let the, the energy flows in the body, okay? We're not talking about in, in your head, okay? So we want to help. Um, so I would say like maybe to people at home, uh, start to uh, uh, tell the difference between your feelings, your thoughts, and your anxiety, right? Wow. So this is, will be an important thing to do. Like, do you feel tense? Tense is your anxiety. It's not your feelings, okay? Because there is a, a mixture between that, okay? If there is a thought, so, so you think that you are afraid, but you don't feel a physical sensation in your body, so this is a thought, okay? Just a thought. And uh, just tell the difference. And, and if you can't find your feelings, so come to, th to therapy, okay? Because they, they are there. They're, something is operating and hiding you, okay? So uh, uh, but you can think, when is the last time that I was really angry? And then try to really, um, to really connect to this situation and try to, to see if you can find out what sensations do you notice in this situation. If you feel tense, it's not your anger, okay? This is your anxiety, okay? If you feel like energy coming up, okay, and your hands are going like this, or, or you can feel from, from down through your belly to your, to your shoulders, energy is coming up, this is your anger. If it feels good, great. Okay, if it feels with tense, so there is some anxiety. If you get stomach aches, okay, so the anger goes onto you, like inside your belly. Okay, this is so just think about, about an example uh, a situation that is important to you with someone that is important to you, and, and try to see is there anxiety there? Is there is there thoughts? Do you have a lot of thoughts about it? So you go to your head, or do you have like a sensation in your body? It could be good feelings, of course. You know, you can have think about someone have a loving feeling, warm feelings. You know, so this can be a good start, a good place to start. And there is a lot of information on the internet today, also. You know, just to start. And if you want, really want to do work, so go go find someone that can really help you. And when you find someone and you go to therapy, don't stay if you don't feel like there is a problem there. Okay, don't just stay in therapy and, 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 and you know, the, the therapist tell you it, it takes time, go away. 
go away. If you don't feel progress, okay, if you don't feel progress and, and it's a progress, you know, when, when therapists say it's a progress, it takes a lot of time. If you feel progress, good. But if you don't feel progress and they say, okay, it takes a lot of time, go find another wow. therapist. This is my, uh, this is what I, what I think. When you say it takes a lot of time, are you talking about 10 years or three weeks? Okay. So, you know, the higher the anxiety, the longer the treatment, right? So, uh, yeah, the, the, the fastest, if the anxiety shoots up through the roof, so it says like we need to be to do restructuring of the anxiety, it will take time. But patients get a lot of benefits from the work. This is also, I will repeat it. You need to have benefits from the work. You need to feel like you're getting progress. Like yeah. in everything you do in life, you won't go to do something unless you feel that you are in progress. It doesn't mean that it's magic. It's not magic. It's hard work, but yes. you need to feel that you are in, uh, th there is something there that, you, okay, I'm, we are getting somewhere. I can feel it. It's not there. We're never going to get there, you know. Life all the time we can develop. It's endless, right? Yeah. But you have your goals. Your goals are very clear. Uh, the therapist is not vague. You are talking about your goals. It's out there and you see together that something is happening when you do the work. Okay, so you can stay. Doesn't happen. Stay and it can, it can take two years. It can take three years. And also it can take uh, uh, two or three sessions or 10 yeah. sessions or 20 sessions. It depends. Really, really depends. Um, Every person is something uh, different, you know, um, you can't really, but you can assess, okay? If you come to an ISTDP therapist or any other therapist that really, um, really is tuned and really want to help and not just sit there and, and waiting to think to happen. So we can assess after a few sessions, you know, approximately how long uh, it, it will take, yeah. Often, often, um, Yuval, the, the patient finds it very, very difficult to self-reflect. Yeah. Would you talk a little bit about that? The fact that, yeah. that, that the defences are coming up or the anxiety comes up as soon as they try yeah. and self-reflect. And, yeah, um, yeah it's, a very, it's a very common problem, especially with patients sure. with um, chronic pain, because that self-reflection yeah. is going to bring them vulnerability, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay. So it's it's very important, of course, to to have patients, as as we said, like see their what is going on, like get to know themselves. So the therapist in ICDP is very active. So we do a lot of of uh, summaries of the process, like especially when patients feelings uh, a lot of pain or they have they suffer from high anxiety. So we use these summaries and this cognitive work to lower the anxiety, to regulate the anxiety. So it's like a bridge to the patient. It's like modeling to the patient, okay? I, I see you, right? And of course, like asking, we're not telling to the patients anything. Is that true? Do you think the same? Do you think different? Or, or, or sometimes we can let the patients try to, to do the summary, right? And, and, and whatever comes up, we will work with it, okay? If they say, M -M -M, I don't know what is going on. So this is, okay, we need, we need to talk about it, okay? So what are we doing here, right? Because what are your goals here, right? We, do, do you want to pay attention to you, right? Let's see, like, if you do just a body scan here, what are your sensations in the body? Right. This is something about, you know, there are patients that are really uh, used to uh, ignore themselves. So when you when you invite them to pay attention to the sensation, they say, well, what are you talking about? What do you want? Yeah. Right. So, so let's see. Yeah. So let, let's see. Can we pay attention to you here? Do you want to pay attention to you? How do you feel about okay. this attention? Yeah. Also that we need to do some work with that, with this yeah. paying attention too. Right, and see that, that because if the patient doesn't want to pay attention to himself, we have no right to do anything. 
right? So we need to work on that, right? And really establish, establish his will to pay attention to himself. And we, we monitor this unconscious anxiety to tell us where we at, okay? If he's flat, he's not with us, okay? If he sighs or we get, get intense, so we know that we are on the right, right track. Uh, uh, Tova, would you pop on? Uh, Tova is the only person that can actually write on our screen. Would you write down uh, John Fredrickson's name of John Fredrickson's book, the uh, the lies we tell yeah. ourselves for yeah. our audience? Yeah. Because what Yaval is talking about is actually put together in a book for for the general public or for people in chronic pain or with relationship problems that actually is vignettes of how it works. So. Um, it might be of interest to some of our audience. Yes, I'll put it up on our on our on our page. But there was another doctor, um, another ICDB doctor, who's a psychiatrist, who's actually teaching in Canada to psychologist. Rose introduced him to our show. I'm blanking on his name. He wrote the Alan book Apple, about is it? Alan Apple. Sweet yes, Sorrow. Dr. Alan Apple. And what was wonderful about Sweet him is I left. Yes, I left that. I left that session, that that broadcast, and I understood clearly how important the relationship is between the therapist and the client, and it, it personally affected me, you know. Yeah. But as I, I was blown away by it because I never realized how important that was. And I do remember, like, one therapist saying to me, you know, how we are in this relationship, how we are here is how I want you to be in the world so this is this is safe and i i i recall that incident because so the therapists are making that important but it i see it in a, with iscdp therapists that we've had on the show it's 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 a very yeah. key factor the safety yeah. that someone will feel in the relationship with with yeah, the, sure. the patient and the client you know it's yeah we, we we want to do our best to offer secure attachments Yes. Right. Yes. But yeah, but it, it's getting complicated when, when, you know, because of trauma and the history. So mixed feelings are coming up with us, which is good. And the resistance is coming up with us, which is good. Yeah. This is a lot of time when, when therapists are getting confused. Okay. Why wow, is getting angry with me? And, and, or, uh, but th this is mixed feelings that are coming up. Like, and, and you need as a therapist also, of course, to work on your anxiety and feeling tolerance, right? This is our job to do, because if you don't, so when those feelings will come up, you will get anxious and, and you can't do the work with the patient. So, uh, yeah, for yeah. sure, like, like when feelings are coming up with us, we want to help the patient really uh, tolerate these mixed feelings with us. Uh, building his capacity to, as Rose said, to pay attention, right? There is mixed feelings here, right? There is good feelings and there is also feelings of uh, uh, frustration or anger here with me. Or okay, annoying. so, yeah, I would say that in most cases, I won't say in more, but at least half patients don't need more help, you know, being nice. That's right. You know? They need help. So, being yeah, honest. They need, like, so they're allowed being, to be honest. They're allowed to be honest with their therapist. Yeah, but what they you know, the, uh, uh, when we when we have you know in the day to day life, we are taught to be civil. We are taught to be nice. So yeah, they are, they are, we have a lot of practice with that. And I also, people, I also, I well, also, yeah, yeah. I ask patient, do you need help? Like you know, being nice or or or, or with love. When I mean with love is just taking care of other people because this is what patients a lot of the time do. They take care of, of other people by hiding their feelings. So mm -hmm. most of the time they will need help to really feel the anger and it is about the mixed feelings, but having access, I would say having access to this anger can bring big improvements. Oh, just absolutely. having access, just having access, can they can feel, okay, I feel more assertive. Yeah, I feel more confidence, okay? This person uh, used to talk to me and I didn't respond. And this time, 
it was different. Okay, something like that will will you can watch it and 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 track it. But mm. yeah, I would say that uh, it, uh, more than half of the people they need help to really get access to the anger. It's misunderstood, of course. The anger is still misunderstood. Like what I'm going to hit him? As a, of course, we are talking about just feeling your feelings. Don't do anything about. So you won't have to do like if you get into fights for sure. Yeah, so we want to help you feel it inside so you won't get into trouble. Mm. Yeah. Could I add to that? It's really about uh, responding rather than reacting. When, when we respond to someone who's hurting us or wh whom we're upset with and we respond rather than reacting, that's the balance that we're needing to, to find again and, and relive our lives in a responsive way rather than a reactionary way and yeah. and within therapy we can actually see that happen as the patient becomes aware of their anger and their grief and their sadness and then they no longer need to react when someone says something frightening to them or the boss is un unfair yeah. or whatever they yeah. can actually just respond and then they remain safe and part yeah. of this work for people with chronic pain is to see that safety is possible yeah. and they never they never see that in their daily lives so yeah just yeah. to add to your comment there. yeah yeah there. great point and i remember i think it was in Al dr alan abbas book that he said reaching through resistance he said to the therapist never give up on the healthy part of the patient Mm. Exactly. Never, 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 never give up because it's there. That this relates to what you're saying, Rose, wow. because we can, yeah. you know, because the defenses are there to push us away, to push yeah. uh, other, other, other people away, to push the, the patient away. So we need to remember, like, there is a person there and we want to reach to that person. And if things are getting stuck, you know, people are hearing us now, if, if things are stuck, just need to, you know, take a distance from it. From a, don't get tagged up in the stuckness because it's not there. Take a step back, you know, talk to someone or, or, or go do something else that is good for you, you know, because it, in therapy, we know it's like when, when we get tackled with the defenses, we need to step back and see, okay, what do we want to do here mm -hmm. together? So you can ask yourself, okay, what do I want to do for, for myself? And the answer won't be in, you know, getting stuck in your head. If you like have this really uh, a chronic pain, so really go take care of yourself. And uh, feelings are a great way to uh to to give the body energy but there are you know there are other ways to do it like simple simple things small things you can do you can do sport right you can go uh, talk to to someone you trust one person is enough mm. would you actually expand on that i know we're running out of time a little bit but this one person you can trust yeah <laughs> Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, it's just, you know, if yeah, if way. there is something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, in a way, um, people who've got repressed feelings actually don't really have anyone to trust, do they, in a way? And that's something that they need to also notice, that they'll only give a certain amount of themselves within a relationship. And especially in an intimate relationship, there's only a little bit that they can... You know, like their partner, they'll, they'll only show them the angry part of themselves or the compliant part of themselves, but they won't show the true part. Do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so that's another issue when, when they go to talk to someone that they can trust. Uh, that's all. I'm just sort of commenting yeah. that it's not yeah, that sure. easy. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not easy at all. But, but this is why we, we need to really, you know, remind ourselves just remind ourselves that the healthy part is there, right? Yes. Our, uh, the healing is there. We need to remind ourselves. You know, I, I just uh, um, um, 
we have in 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 my family uh, um there is you know uh, dementia and alzheimer you know so i see what we can do about that i see it's amazing when you you use your brain and your heart and you know a doctor tells you okay it's chronic and you can't do anything about it which can be true but there is tons of things you can do in the most chronic disease exactly okay like if you see uh, old people when they sit i saw it like in the last few days they sit they like this like they hold their hands like this and they're all cr- crumbled inside okay if you just offer them the opportunity to open just open their hands you know so of course feelings can can it's it's related to feelings just open beautifully said yes yeah, don't, don't allow to to be like this why do you need to be like this this is one good thing you can do it yourself with your body right just pay attention to your body the way you are okay don't be like this this really make a difference yeah. right it's, but it's very true it's physiological yeah sure yeah and it's a reflection also of our inner thoughts isn't it when we're like this it's hard to be depre- it's hard for to be sure. depressed charlie brown yeah. i have a i have a, a thing yeah. on my it's hard to be yeah. depressed like this <laughs> yeah i'm really you know, working just, on being depressed <laughs> and this is the experience okay if your body is in a posture that it can really feel you can really feel your body how is that like for you you can try it and see Mm-hmm. experience and yeah. see yeah. I wanted to bring something up important so many times the anger we're we're angry at ourselves like we're not giving it to the people that kind of deserve it but we take it on um yeah. you know it's kind of like the self-judgment the critical yeah. and I think when we can help people with that it can be a breakthrough that you You know like because they'll be like I'm not angry at my like I'm not angry anymore or I didn't grow up in a bit but then we realize all the anger is sitting inside of our you know in our belly or in our joints or in our he- head causing you know migraine yeah. like and then yeah, when you t- I, when, and then when you tell the person in therapy like then they get more angry like it has to you guys are really good at like no it's the anger at yourself it's like about forgiveness and then we go back to the you To the love it's just such a beautiful cycle when somebody can do it over and over again themselves oh yeah you know it, it's just this self-reflection that Rose was talking about like you give somebody that gift of being able to go inside and it's not so scary anymore they can yeah. be their own therapist and their own doctor they can do the work. yeah that of course that's the goal well, uh, that's the goal yeah. for ITGP yeah. isn't it sure, it's always yeah. for sure. the person to always be And, and yeah. one of in Patricia Coglin's book um, that was hidden from I can't remember the name but now she actually interviews the patients five years later mm-hmm. and they they actually um, say how it's changed their lives just by having that insight that they no longer have to react they just respond in their lives and it brings peace to the whole to the whole family it brings peace not right. just to the person but But yeah. to all those that they interact with and you yeah. Know, yeah worldwide there are ISTDP therapists everywhere but they oh. don't actually go out and promote themselves unfortunately and that's when one of the issues that we've had on our on our program often when we've talked to um, psychiatrists or psychologists or, or social workers who do ISTDP that they don't promote themselves as that healing you um, um physical healing person mm-hmm. they, yeah. they promote themselves as an emotional healing person and forget mm-hmm. that they do yeah. both in the moment yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. if you're looking yeah. if you're looking for someone a nice TDTP type person keep keep searching they're around they're in every yeah. country yeah. Uh, sometimes they're more concentrated in a particular area here in Australia I think we've got more on the Gold Coast and Than we have anywhere else um, <laughs> we've got quite a few in Victoria but mm-hmm. it's quite interesting they're they're in batches because 
we've all learned ISTDP from word of mouth. It hasn't really come mm. from yeah. uh, from the university or, or anywhere yeah. else. It's come from word of mouth and we're led to people and like pe Alan. People Pass. getting better, people getting better from yes. amazing therapy. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was at a, I, at an Alan Abbas conference in Norway a couple of years ago, and I was sitting uh -huh. with this lovely girl from Norway who works in a pain clinic. I can't remember her name now. And I said, oh, how did you get here? And she said, uh, my patients go home. And I thought, what a lovely, lovely thing to say. They don't need to stay. Uh-huh. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So actually more people are on the show than than they were at the beginning. So let's stay on a few more minutes and continue because there's a lot of people watching. And if anyone has any questions for Rose or myself or Yuval, um I, I love what you're doing in Israel. And um and, you know, I'm I'm so what, what I, I, I'm show, I know do. this I know this uh so to talk about it in a minute. I just know this show is three o'clock in, in the US. And yeah. um, you know, ten o'clock here. Um, but can you ch talk more about your? Because you are taking an active role in teaching other therapists, as well as you have a private practice. And I find that very. You're really devoting a lot of your time to this. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I devoted all, all my time, I would say, to to really spread the word for ISTDP yeah. because I I see it more like uh, more than a method, like really. Uh, John Fredrickson said that I heard him say it, and I really, um, I think the same, when it's like a, a, a couple of a really guided principles that are crucial for, for every therapy to be really uh, successful. And, um, and I see it, like, I, I think it's a, a real necessity that therapists need it, patients need it, and what I'm trying to do uh, with my with my work here, I like I, you know, we have I have uh, hosting uh, the best therapists and doing seminars with them. And around the seminar, I'm trying to organizing a lot of learning. So there is a seminar, so people are signing for the seminar, but I translate um, uh, materials and send to the participant and also to everybody. I, I send, in the end, I send everything to everybody. But, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so I translate material and I organize with the generosity of John Fredrickson. I organize every month now uh, meetings for therapists that wants to come watch John's work and get a, an analysis of the therapy before our meeting so they can when they watch it they can really know what is going on because some the therapist said this is so complex i don't know what is going on so when you can really see okay this intervention he addressed this and this and this this is the reason he's doing it so you can really learn it so uh, yeah. so through this through these seminars I'm uh, organizing a lot of activities, so therapists are welcome to, to come and learn and to, to get better. There is, um, yeah, just just come. Wonderful. Just come, just come and learn. No, and you have a resource for pay, for clients in Israel, and you're also working internationally. If somebody wants to see you, um, I work for with Israelis that lives uh, abroad, so uh, yeah, oh, from the states. Okay. So, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And Definitely. we don't have a, enough uh, ISTDP therapists in Israel, so this is something that is also important for me to really oh, promote this in Israel. It, it's yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. in a few years, it will be will be changed. Yeah. Wow. Well, you see, you're changing the word of mouth, aren't you? You're making it that it's there. Um, yeah. Available and putting and the books in Hebrew. The books are in Hebrew now. There's the lies we tell ourselves in Hebrew and no, his no, second, this is not no? It. Oh, the no, other book, co the other co-creating change will be out like in a month in Hebrew, and co-creating safety will be in two, uh, 2022 in Hebrew. And wow. uh, there are articles that I put up in Hebrew uh, from from Devon Law and. Uh, and also now I'm trying starting to translate also uh, reaching through resistance, and uh, maybe Patricia will be next. But I'm I'm on it. Yeah, wow. we want to open wow. an I, ISTDP uh, studies here in Israel, but it have a lot of plans in the future. Wow, good. Yeah, Nasha Kowak. Nasha Kowak. 
Um, here's a question from, from our audience. On hiding feelings to protect the mother, I wasn't protecting my mother but myself. She, she had no connection to her. So I guess it's just a, a yeah. statement. Yeah. Yeah. Hiding the feelings is a way to, yeah, to protect from when, when she was, you know, when you're a child, you don't know it. Of course, you have to do it because you are dependent on others to take care of you. Yeah. But when you are a grown up and you want to get close to other people, so, you know, anxiety and this defense of, you know, just thinking all the time about other people and don't let yourself be in the center of things or don't let yourself wanting things this will will take the form of like anxiety and defenses and and, and chronic pain and chronic yeah, pain. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes 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 for sure the body what you said was is so important we we, we work with the body you know istdp for me it's like it's it's a uh, head and heart all the body yeah of course yeah like, the body needs to feel good. You can't like, separate. You, you, you can't separate. No, no. John it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's separate. just crazy to to the, the separation. It, it's crazy because we feel in the body. So what, what do you mean? So we feel in the body. We, where, where do we feel? Right. Sure. Yeah. We need to cut the body off so that the feelings won't come up when around the primary caregiver. And that's the important take home message robbie that the feelings had to be repressed to stay in tune with the primary caregiver to actually have a, a roof over our heads and food in our mouths and um, we have had to give up our feelings and accept our anxiety and our defenses to have the roof over our heads and the food in our stomachs and some sort of relationship with whoever was our original right. caregiver and yeah. that's the important take-home message yeah. If you don't acknowledge that you've actually shut all those feelings down and that they actually do belong in us, we're then going to have somatic pain. TMS, whatever, whatever vocabulary you use to describe it. But it is inflammation in the body in some instances and it also is there to keep us away from our feelings. And that's the important thing. All this somatic pain is to block the feeling like it's here at the neck and it's blocked yes yes so, so yeah. true very very well put great very true thank you yeah. yes well done well <laughs> you two can go to bed now can't you <laughs> <laughs> nearly 11 at night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. we're gonna have to we're just gonna have to bring rose here and keep her here for a couple of months and and, yeah. and, <laughs> and have me up so, at 11 o'clock at night too. yeah yeah thank you <laughs> so good. much Yvonne. thank you it was wonderful thank you all yeah. it was a pleasure so happy to have met you and connect with you me and too. other amazing yeah. people thank you thank you rose it was a pleasure yeah. thank you Topa. thank you yeah. everybody that listened okay um yeah. let's have a great ha let's have a great year Safe yes, year. that's right. Yeah. Here it comes. Let's have a great Absolutely. year. This, we need yeah. it, don't we? The best yes. year ever. Good. Here it comes. Well, good night to you both. And bless you for the new year.